continue. That's right. Derek Jeter, David Ortiz, Alex Rodriguez, and I'm Kevin Burkhardt. The Mets, seven to three winners over the Dodgers. And, well, you guys have been good. You've been predicting a lot of things right. And you talked about getting on the board early, Alex, and how important that would be. Well, the Mets did the very first batter of the game, and it set the tone, didn't it? It, it was so important. After the bloodbath here last night, which we left here pretty night, to come back early and have their best player and catalyst, Lindor, setting the tone and say to the Dodgers, not so fast, mm -hmm. this series is a series, and it started with his home run, and of course, Sean Manaya was th through a gym. He was incredible, beautiful. Incredible, incredible. Absolutely. You know, they look extremely weird. Like, uh, yesterday during the game, they look like they have no energy, nothing was going on, uh, a couple of errors, you know, pitching was, pitching white was all over the place, but today, I think Lindor coming in and setting the tone for them, it got everybody going on the lineup. Yeah, I think it, this boils down to the Mets' mindset. Say we talked about last night. At this point in the season, it doesn't make a difference whether you lose 9 nothing or one nothing. A loss is a loss and a win is a win. And they were able to bounce back. However ugly it did look last night, they mm -hmm. were able to bounce back, and now we have a series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really did. And Manaya, we uh, just talked to him on Fox, just absolutely outstanding, giving the Mets exactly what they needed here today. But you like Lindor, and you like that swing today. Why? Yeah, and I thought he was a lot more in rhythm today. What you're going to see, I'm going to show you a little video, but what I'm going to show is three things. Number one, he's got a very head still, he's got nice separation, and he hits against a nice front leg. I'm going to show you right here. Watch his front foot and his separation and then watch him get extended. Wow. And behind the baseball. Look how still that head Beautiful. is. Beautiful. Look at the line. Look mm -hmm. at the line across the plate. Straight and then up. That's mm -hmm. what we talk about <laughs> what the greater theater are normally doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've been talking about that line the whole time. Yeah, I know. It looks the same for every single hitter. <laughs> That's right. Well, for good hitters. <laughs> but, but only when they hit the ball well, Derek. <laughs> and, only and, good hitters. And, and the balance, just like a good golfer, Lindor had perfect balance. I tell you what, what stands out with Lindor. This is what stands out. His demeanor, he's always on an even keel. You know, he's hit big home runs. He runs around the bases like it's a spring training home run. They got blown out last night. I'm sure everyone on their team is looking at him. And his expressions don't change. And I think that rubs off on the rest of the team. There's never any panic in his face. Hey, Derek, I'm going to add to that because I agree. I saw something right before he hit this home run where he hit a ball off his toe and he was jumping around and he was laughing with the umpire, with, with the catcher. And next pitch, boom, hits a home run demeanor and controlling your emotions popping that's what we talk about especially during the playoff you want to control your emotion this guy you don't know when he's happy or when he's sad you never know he controls emotion even if he strike out or he hit a home run he's at the same level of all time you know meanwhile mark fiano is their young third baseman right he got the starting job uh, around may and, and he really had an excellent year what he had 27 home runs well, he had the biggest hit of the game. It was after Derek, they intentionally walked Lindor to get to him, and he hits a grand slam. That changed. He's got three home runs this postseason. Yeah, I mean, look, you can't blame him for intentionally walking Lindor. Everyone has to do it in that particular situation. But this young man has stepped up, it seems like, every opportunity that he gets in the postseason. And in besides the home run, how about the double play he turned? Hmm. Uh, I forget what inning it was where he had a little bobble when, when L.A. was starting to rally and come back. So he's been playing great on both sides of the ball. Yeah, that was a sixth inning where it looked a little shaky, but he kind of hung on there. They got that double play to end the inning. Poppy, you like Vientos? What, he's giving him a little pop there? i tell you what, Viento has so much power. And he's, he's still, Kevin, in the learning process. Yeah. Jump hitter, trying to figure out. He hit 27 homers in the learning process. So you know that this guy is going to begin to be a monster. And, and the irony that he started on the bench, he actually started in AAA, okay, because of J.D. Martinez. And when the Mets started to cut back a little bit, and they trade Scherzer, and they're saying there's a rebuild year. Ironically, they back up into being a better team, and he's been a main core. Anyone not named Francisco Lindor, he's been the MVP. And not only did he hit the home run, but then Kike Hernandez had a chance to hit a grand slam and hit a ground ball to third, which he was in the front end of a double play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very, very interesting. I'm curious of the Mets one thing. They see Edwin Diaz came in, and it wasn't easy. And it hasn't been easy for him lately. But he, he locked it down. I think the Mets are still kind of waiting for him to find, like, 
deep. On fire, Edwin Diaz, and they're trying to survive while he's figuring that out. Yeah, and I think these three days are not really good, and then he didn't pitch yesterday as well. I think Diaz is the kind of guy that the more he pitches, the better he's going to get. Most closers are like that. So I expect him to get better, not worse. I, 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 I love the Diaz that I have been seeing the past week. And let me tell you why, Kevin. He's fast, but he's electric. Like his fast, he last fast for last game he pitched, he was 102 last pitch. And his slider is very sharp. He's using a back door again, left in the batter, which is making, giving so much room in the outer third part of the mm -hmm. plate. I tell you, he makes it interesting, right? It's, it's must watch TV. But his stuff is electric, so even when he gets runners on, he's able to strike people out and get out of it. So I'm looking forward to going to see, what do they call that song, that the, the horn song he used? Uh, oh, in? my God. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. it's uh, Timmy Trumpet. <laughs> yes, oh, no. yes. Yeah, so it's, it's I'm gonna... looking forward to seeing that. Derek wants to see it live in person at City Field. Maybe we see it on Wednesday. We'll find out. All right, we're heading to New York. It's game three of the NLCS, and it's all tied at one. How fun is this? Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern on FS1 on the Fox Sports app. Mets and Dodgers City Field about to be pretty electric, and we can't wait here. And we look forward to this game three. And what are you looking forward to, Derek? What are we going to see? I tell you what, I, they haven't announced who's starting yet. I, I'm going to make the assumption that it's Severino. And what I'm looking forward to is watching him pitch at City Field. I mean, this is a guy that's been in the big games. He's been in the spotlight on the other side of town for the Yankees. He's not intimidated. He's going to go out there and pitch a good game. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking for the Dodgers offensively to come through once again. I mean, they face a tough left-handed pitcher today. And Manaya, Manaya did an outstanding job, especially keeping those left-handed batter, uh, keeping them away from the bat, from getting on base, getting hit. Uh, Otani didn't look too good today. He was off, absolutely off. But they had to turn on the engine back in New York before they come back here. You know, I'm looking for Bueller to, to give him some length. Look, the bullpen game was a disaster today. Uh, it works sometimes here and there, but it's not a championship formula. Starting pitching matters, and you have to have it. And it's, it's a tall task, Kevin, to ask a cast of characters to piece together nine innings when there's so much recourse at stake. Yeah, and we'll see how that all plays out in Game 3. Meanwhile, for those of you here in this area leaving uh, Dodger Stadium, we have an award-winning... Hey, Dodgers Nation! Welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got one of those heart-stirring stories that every fan of our legendary Clayton Kershaw will feel deeply about. But before I dive into all the details about his future, you know the drill. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any updates from the Dodgers as we head into the final stretch of the season. Now, hold on tight because this news is sure to catch you by surprise. We're all eyes on the playoffs and our quest for another title, but in the meantime, there's some important behind-the-scenes action that could significantly influence the team in 2025. And yes, I'm talking about our very own icon, Clayton Kershaw. At 36 years old and dealing with injuries, many fans were left wondering if he'd return for another season. The answer came straight from Kershaw himself, and it's going to warm the hearts of everyone who loves seeing this superstar on the mound. After a tough season marked by foot surgery in August, Kershaw made it clear he's not done yet. He stated that he plans to pitch again in 2025. My shoulder, my elbow, my arm feel great, he said. Obviously, I had some tough luck with my foot this year, but I want to make use of this surgery and I'm not shutting it down. So I'm going to come back next year and give it a go and see how it goes. Words that showcase the grit of one of the greatest icons in Dodgers history. And for those wondering if he still has what it takes, here's an impressive stat. Kershaw is just 32 strikeouts away from reaching the historic 3,000 strikeout mark, a feat only 19 pitchers have achieved in MLB history. He still has an option for the 2025 season, and with our rotation needing experienced arms, especially after Gavin Stone's surgery sidelined him for 2025, Kershaw's return could be pivotal. Now, I want to ask you, do you think our legendary Kershaw still has the fire to burn and reach the 3,000 strikeouts milestone next season? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to share this news with other fans, leave your opinion in the comments, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing about our star's future and everything Dodgers related. Let's stay strong and focused as we push toward victory.